Welcome to The Author Show, where we feature new authors and books from fiction to self-help and everything in between. You'll find it all at theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. And now let the show begin. Hi, this is The Author Show, and I'm your host, Linda Thompson. Ancient history has revealed that often when a ruler died, his household, family, and servants, and sometimes pets, were buried with him alive. Author of Those Deep Below, John W. Noyes, takes us to the ancient Inca Empire in South America, where his protagonist, Rezi, is one of those buried. That sends cold chills down my spine, but I definitely want to learn more. John is here to share Rezi's story in Those Deep Below. John, welcome to our program. Thank you very much for having me. John, without giving too much away, what is Those Deep Below all about? Well, you hit on it exactly. It's based much on my travels through South America, and it, according to tradition, so many people, when the king or the emperor died, were buried alive in these tombs. And some of them are truly fantastic, immense places deep under the earth. And as I saw some of these tombs through my travels, I always wondered, what would it be like to be one of those people, to be buried alive? And what would you do? How would you escape? How would you survive all of the multitudes of factions that would come out of the woodwork? You know, you would have your fanatics that wanted to do exactly what their religion and their traditions told them to. You would have criminal elements that would be buried alive, that would be wanting to seize power. You would have those that didn't want to be buried alive, but were forced to by tradition, that would be trying desperately to escape. How do you resolve all of that, and how would you survive? And so that's kind of what the book focuses on. It follows Rezi as she tries to deal with all the different competing political and religious factions in this underground society. Boy, you've come up with a lot of things that I'll bet the average person just never even considers. So how extensive was your tours into this underground world of the dead? Well, my research and my Travels and stuff was pretty extensive. Spent a lot of time in several different countries and continents, delving into different tombs and researching different traditions that people have for burying and respecting their dead. And then in the book, I delve very deeply into it. Culture is one of the things that I always look for, whether I'm playing a game, whether I'm reading a book. It keeps things from being flat. Is there a culture? Is there something that defines the people and forces their motivations? And that's one of the things that I really tried to bring into the book was that sense of culture. And so, for example, several of my priest groups are organized after different animals. And these are actually based on fact within the Inca Empire. So they're based on animals. And the Inca practiced a large amount of corporeal modification, where they would literally change their bodies to be more like animals. They found mummies that have had their skulls elongated by a process of strapping boards to it to make the growth plate grow to where it's extended so they look more like condors. They had different ways of stretching arm bones and leg bones to make themselves taller and things of that nature. And so I incorporated that into a lot of my priestly casts to give it that sense of realism and give it that sense of culture, but it's based in historical fact. Okay. Well, your book is classified as historical fiction, but also science fiction. Is those Mm -hmm. deep below for fantasy or fiction? Well, I would say that it's probably a bit more fiction than fantasy, but certainly anyone who is a lover of fantasy and lover of the genre could find a great deal of enjoyment in this. I don't necessarily incorporate magic, but the beliefs and the superstitions of all of the different groups form this sense of wonder that oftentimes make you wonder exactly what is the difference, you know? Is this something that's truly magical, or is this something that could potentially be explained by science? Were you thinking of any specific type of reader while writing Those Deep Below? The writer that I was looking for was somebody who is not afraid to face not only their fears, but also humanity and the good and the bad that comes out of things. 
these traditions by our light and our sense were very, very, very barbaric. But by the standpoint of the people that practiced them, it was every day. It was a piece of their faith. It was a piece of their society. And so that was the kind of reader that I was looking for, be they a young adult or a bit more mature, somebody that would be willing to look at life from a different perspective and look at things and try to figure out why, or rather how, you could live in a society like this. I believe Those Deep Below is your first book. Do you feel that there's any other author who may have had an influence on your style of writing? I can think of several, and the one that comes most strikingly to mind is Garth Nix, the writer of the Abhorson series. One of the things that he was very, very good at was incorporating that sense of culture and incorporating the societal norms, be they however different from our own, in a way that seemed very plausible and seemed to have an explanation and a definite effect on the characters and their motivation. Well, John, I know that ancient peoples in Egypt and surrounding areas did bury servants with their dead kings, and I was unaware until I started researching for our talk today that the Incas also practiced that. Are there any other civilizations around the globe that maintained that practice as well? Actually, there were several, and through my research, you know, I was able to identify quite a few. One of the ones that I borrowed very heavily for in setting the stage of the tomb itself was actually the first emperor of ancient China. His tomb was massive, and that is where the terracotta warriors came from. It was actually an army that was built to stand forever vigilant over his resting place. With him was buried a whole host, several thousand, concubines, wives, servants, meant to continue to serve him after the afterlife. And incidentally, that's also where I borrow the idea of having a map of the entire kingdom laid out on the floor with rivers and oceans of quicksilver. But beyond the ancient Chinese, you also had some of the most famous of the ancient tombs being located in ancient Mexico with both the Maya and the Aztec. In fact, the entire city of Teotihuacan was a necropolis. Wow. Well, okay. This is getting a little spooky. So tell me, do your characters take on traits of people you know, or are they pure imagination, or are they from history? A little from column A, a little from column B. There are certainly those that I borrowed traits and attributes from various people that I knew, and even some specific stories and whatnot from my own personal history. But quite a few of them are actually a bit more based in history And in my own imagination, they're characters that just kind of came to life. But I can tell you one that is, in fact, based on historical evidence. That is a character that you meet towards the end of the book, who is actually based very heavily on the Roman emperor Caligula. He was not a good guy. So (laughs) tell me, (laughs) will your character Rezi return to us in a sequel or perhaps even a series? Yes, I'm actually under contract right now to write the next two books. Can you see this, because I sure can, on the small screen as perhaps a TV series? I would be thrilled. I really would. I think that there's a lot there that we can do, especially from a visual perspective, with the tomb itself. And I think it would be very unique and give a lot of new opportunities that aren't necessarily out there right now or offered very well by the current <laughs> small screen. I would love to see it done as a miniseries, honestly, so we could delve deep enough into the characterization and the culture. What is it about the Incan culture that fascinates you the most? Well, I lived in Peru and Bolivia for a lengthy period of time, which is where most of the culture was based. And it was so unique and so different than anything that you encounter through most of Western civilization. You're talking about a people that live in a very rugged, very volatile area that is separated between incredibly high peaked, very dry mountains and the Amazon rainforest. And they built this empire that kind of straddled the two and built these incredible incredible monuments and buildings in places that 
you wouldn't think human people could live. I mean, Machu Picchu is, of course, the most famous of their sites, and it's built completely at the top of a mountain with massive stones that were brought up somehow (laughs) and placed into these buildings, and they built it completely without mortar. There's no cement. There's nothing in between it. It's literally just rocks stacked on each other. But here's what's unique about it. They took such care and such precision in building this that they literally carved each stone to lock completely against its neighbor. They mirrored every little imperfection, every little bump, every little indentation perfectly in the rock that it was set next to. When you look at these things, you can't get a sheet of paper in between them. (laughs) That almost makes you believe in all of the stories about the aliens, right? (laughs) Almost, because you look at it and you're like, how did these ancient peoples do this? This is a feat of engineering that we can only recreate today using laser precision. Absolutely. So, John, will you read for us a short excerpt from Those Deep Below? Yes. The great stone moved, groaning into the place prepared for it, while the men charged with leveraging it into place groaned, sweated, and cursed. Inch by inch, it eclipsed the precious light as it lowered, sealing off the world above with its bright sun and fresh air. The entire host of the king's household stood stark still as it descended, their faces as impassive as if they had been carved from the same unfeeling granite being levered into place above them. The shadows deepened as the last rays of light were snuffed out. Finally, with a resounding boom, which echoed through the chamber, the light vanished, taking the world above with it. At first, there was silence, as the assembled group quietly stood in the dark, holding their breath. A small sob broke the silence, and all at once, flints were struck, and the light of torches began to flicker into existence around the chamber. No one spoke. As torchlight gradually filled the chamber, everyone continued to stare at the stone that had sealed the entrance and stolen the sun. Some stared with sorrow, some with dread, others with purpose. A select few looked at the stone with glee, a mad happiness born of a knowledge that the time of their power had finally come. In the end, everyone turned, almost of one accord, and began to descend below. The wives, the concubines, the artisans, priests, guards, attendants, and prisoners of the dead king. A body of nearly 4,000 people, now trapped, now sealed, entombed with the king to serve him forever in his afterlife, called to serve as those below. Oh, my God, that sent cold chills up my spine. So tell me, where can we learn more about you? And most of all, where can we purchase those deep below? So you can learn more about me on my website as well as my publisher's website. My website is johnwnoise.com, and my publisher's website is storiesforpublication.com. Both of them have links to where you can purchase copies of the book. Perfect. And will you spell out your website, particularly your last name for us, please? (laughs) Absolutely. It's really easy to remember, though, because it's spelled no and yes. So it's John, J-O-H-N-W-N-O-Y-E-S. That is an easy way to remember it. We've been speaking with John Noyce, author of Those Deep Below. John, it's been a real pleasure talking with you today. And when you release your next book, will you please consider coming back to chat with us again? Oh, absolutely. And thank you for having me. When I was in the sixth grade, we studied South American history. And that's when I first learned of the Incas. From that day until today, I have loved reading about their culture. I'm eager to read those deep below. And I do hope that our conversation with John will be an incentive for you to read his book as well. And I thank you for listening. The Author Show podcast may be accessed at any time by visiting theauthorshow.com. And selected interviews can also be found on major podcasting platforms such as iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Podomatic, and many more. Are you an author who would like to be featured on our show? 
Please visit theauthorshow.com and complete the interview request form so that we may contact you. Marketing is seldom easy for authors, and The Author Show is a great way to promote your work worldwide using a high-quality interview that can make a real impact. Please visit our site daily as we continue to introduce wonderful authors of extremely interesting books on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. Find out more about authors and their work at theauthorsshow.com. Theauthorsshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.